and a very warm welcome to today's back page video, for which I'm pleased to say we're joined by Record Sports Keith Jackson. It's been another dramatic weekend for Scottish football with goals, red cards, short results, and even a mass brawl to keep us on our toes. And it's not over yet, as Rangers head to four for tonight, looking to keep their unbeaten League One record intact. Keith, you've been following the off field problems at Rangers for the last few days, the weeks. Last, last few years. Months, years, <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Um, Alan McCoy came out this morning and claims it's possibly starting to affect his, his players. Do you go along with that? Um, I think it would be difficult for the players not to become affected by it. Um, the, the, listen, the bottom line is they're handsomely paid to play in a league which they have won out the park before they've even started. What, you know, the performance level is, is what will what will bother Ali McCoy at this point because he wants to keep going. You know, they've set themselves a target, win this league by as many points as possible, as quickly as possible. Uh, I think what well, they can go 20 odd points clear, 20 points clear. So obviously he'll be concerned about that. But you know, I defy anybody if you're at your place of work and your boss comes in and says to you, "Would you consider taking a wage cut?" It suggests to you that the company that you're working for is in a rather dire financial state. Of course it's a worry. Of course it'll be playing on their minds. I don't think there's any de de debate about it. I'm guessing the players got together and took a group decision to, to not back this uh, this pay cut. Were they within their right to do that? Of course they were. Um, <clears throat> now, that might change whether to look up at the top of the staircase in Ibrox and see other people up there feeling the pinch, taking cuts, making sacrifices. Um, but, you know, these guys sign contracts in good faith. It's not their fault that Rangers handed out ridiculous wages, ridiculous contracts, which they have done. Um, this whole Rangers thing, I said right at the start, when they went down to the, the bottom tier, it was an opportunity for them, because they were going to have massive season tickets, sales. It was an opportunity for them to redesign the way they play the game, um, you know, go the Swansea route, try and copy Barcelona, try and reinvent yourself as a football side, but also do it on the cheap. Stockpile millions away because you've got such a, a massive support behind you. Um, they should have been able to do that. They didn't do it. They blew money. They blew money because Charles Green was desperate to win popularity. The sports. Without that, then um, you know, without Alan McCoy's backing, Charles Green was a sinking ship right from the start. So Alan McCoy's gave him his backing. Alan McCoy's reward was no questions about these contracts. Uh, Mather was very much the same, desperate for popularity cuddled up to Ali McCoy's and allowed him to overspend. Now, I say overspend, I'm not being critical of Ali McCoy's here. His job as manager is to get the best standard that he can do. Of course it is, and it's the same for every manager at every club. He'll always go to the board and say, I need X, I need Y, and it's up to the board then, somebody, to say, no, you can't, we can't afford it. Um, the other point where I have got some sympathy with McCoy is that the wages to turn over at the club now in terms of the first team squad, is under 30%. That's manageable. In fact, it's, it's recommended, good. it's good housekeeping. Yeah. The question at Rangers really isn't the, the spending that's been done on the team, it's where's all the rest of the money going? How is it possible that they had an 18 million pound wage bill for the football club last year, and only eight million pounds of that was, was the first team squad? That's the big question, and that's what Graham Wallace really needs to address if he's gonna sort this mess out. Which is why, to go back to your original point, if I was a player, I'd be saying, well, there's a whole lot of people around this football club need to be taking cuts before you come knocking at our door. Yeah. So where's the money going? That brings us nicely to your very good column today, Keith, which is well worth a read if I do say so myself. Thank you. Living a champagne lifestyle on an iron brew budget is how you put it. The pre-match today at a four-star four sorry, hotel, yeah. but that's only going to infuriate the fans further, surely. Well, I mean, it doesn't. It, it just doesn't fit. The, 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 listen, on the grand scheme of things, a few grand, maybe say ten grand, to do a pre-match at a hotel. It's, it, and it's a drop in the ocean, as where Rangers are concerned. But it, but it highlights the lack of direction, the lack of leadership. The football club. Now, of course, again, will argue correctly so that you know he'll try to do the best to 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 get the best performance out of his players. And if he believes that's what's required ahead of a game at Forfa, then he'll go to the board and say we need that. Somebody at the board has to say, well look Ali, we've just asked these players to take a 15% wage cut. It, it, it highlights the lack of direction, the lack of joined up thinking that goes on at that football club. How is it possible that one week you can walk into a dressing room and say, guys, you'll need to take a wage cut. The following week, you're pampering them, lap a luxury for a game at Forfa. 
and again an elite campaign which has already been decided. It makes no sense. That's the problem Rangers have. There is no joined up thinking. Even a simple man like myself can see that. We've got to move on. Um, moving across to Celtic and hard to believe they're entering the final straight in the, the transfer window. It looks like their bid to sign Robert Snodgrass could be dead. Um, is Neil Lennon running out of time, do you think, to make that marquee signing? It's a difficult one. Again, you, you, where, where do you attribute, and I've got to work, use the word blame, but it, it, it's not, it's, it's the responsibility of pulling this off. Neil Lennon can only say, I would like X, Y and Z. Nothing he can then do about it. It goes to boardroom level. Chief executive has the responsibility. At the start of this window, I suggested that you know a lot of pressure has been put on Peter Lowell here because there was talk about marquee signings. There's been talk about we can afford six million here and six million there. So that, in, in turn, put put it at, at Peter Lowell's door. You, he now needs to deliver, and if he doesn't deliver, then he'll stand accused by the Celtic supporters who said, you know, we said we had six million pounds. Everybody said we had six. Why did we not sign anybody? So there is a lot of pressure, perhaps some internal politics going on as well at Celtic. If they could deliver a, a, a Snodgrass. I mean, that would be, I, I really I really rate him. He would be a sensational sign for Celtic. He's a big Celtic supporter, and I think that Robert Snodgrass would like to come up the road. But, you know, you've seen the message from, Nor from Norris today. It's hands off. That kind of usually suggests, well, see the six million, make it eight million, we might talk. Eight million would be too rich for Celtic's blood. So we're moving on to pace here. Uh, I'd like to drop down to the Championship, Keith. Uh, Paul Hartley's resignation on Saturday, so I took everyone by surprise. Yeah. Why do you think he's chosen to do this at this stage of the season? It was a, it was a sore, that must have been a sore defeat to lose 5-1 at Dumbarton. Um, but there's something about it just a little bit strange. Uh, speculation over the weekend, it's no more than that. Um, perhaps there's no compensation package now, which hampered him when, it, when I think he was speaking to Inverness, Cal Caledonian Thistle. But no compensation, compensation package, sorry. Hearts are interested. There has been a, a, a long-term kind of um, suggestion that one day Paul Hartley would end up at, at Tynecastle. Uh, certainly, by leaving that position, if Hearts were interested in him, they wouldn't have to pay any kind of remuneration to Alwa. Um, I think it's worth the watching. I, I, it just smacks, smacks have been a little bit strange to me. Paul Hartley's got a big future in management, I'm certain of that. He'll turn up somewhere, and I think he'll probably turn up somewhere soon. Right, very good. Just to wrap up, uh, Andy Murray has forced his way into the quarterfinals Fantastic. in Australia this morning. Um, just very quickly, do you think he'll get to the final this year? Well, I think as we speak just now, Songa and, and Federer are, are playing, and that's, yeah. that's his next match. Um, <laughs> listen, he's been up and down a little bit. He's been sensational. Well, he was sensational for the first couple of sets of his game today, uh, then lost his momentum a little bit. Probably needs tested by, by, by one of the bigger hitters. His back seems to be holding up fine. He's great on these courts. Yes, he'll get to the final. Fingers crossed you're right. And he'll win it. Excellent, there you go. It's finishing a positive. Thanks again to Keith for joining us on today's show. Don't forget you can catch up on all the latest headlines on www.dailyrecord.co.uk. And thanks again for joining us.